In this lesson, we're going to continue with making a copy of the assembly and all the parts. There are several ways to do this. One way is under File, Pack and Go. You can take all of the files and save them to a special folder. Let's put a new folder on my desktop called SolidWorks Copy. And then I can take all of the files that are part of this assembly and add a suffix or add a prefix. Let's add a suffix. Let's call them all for copy. We can include all the drawings and simulation results, if any. We can include any custom decals, appearances and scenes. And we can show this in a nested or flat view. This will refer to the level of subassemblies. And once you have all of the options set, go to save. Now this leaves you with your old assembly open. And if you want to find where all of your current files are located, you can just go to File, Find References, and SolidWorks lists where all of these files are coming from. Now some of the files may be coming from different directories. This is part of the magic or mystique or mystery, if you will, behind SolidWorks file management. There's some good information in the SolidWorks help on how SolidWorks finds the files that it's looking for in the assembly. So let's open up the SolidWorks help and search for referenced documents. The very first item in the list is search routine for referenced documents. And I'll let you read through this in detail on your own time. But what I want to point you to here mostly is this list of 13 items. These 13 items are the places where SolidWorks is going to look for a component that is called out in an assembly. The first place it looks is it uses any open document with the same name. So if your assembly opens a file, named cover or base, something with a common name like this that you might find in any assembly, and you just happen to have a file of that name open, SolidWorks is going to use that file instead of the one that you intend. That's the first place that SolidWorks looks. The second place that SolidWorks looks is in the path that you specify in the folders list in the file locations options dialog box. So you can kind of shortcut the system, but you can't shortcut another file with the same name. The highest in the list where you can put your own directory is number two. Let me point out what this file locations options is talking about. You go to your tools, options, file locations. SolidWorks is going to look for reference documents here. Now, I don't have any folders listed here, but what you could do is use this as a bit of lost and found. Or if you want SolidWorks to look first in a particular directory, then you would use the Add button, browse to that particular directory, and then add that to this list. And then SolidWorks would be bringing that folder up in the number two position. So that would be the second place it would look for a part in an assembly. The third place where SolidWorks is going to look is the last folder where the reference document was last saved. So within the assembly, there's information about where its parts were last saved. SolidWorks will remember that, and it can go back there and look later on. And then the list goes on, and you might find that SolidWorks looks in a lot of places that you didn't count on it looking, such as number 12, SolidWorks searches the full path where the document was last saved with its original drive designation. So that's probably the place where I personally would look first, but SolidWorks is going to look 11 other places before it looks there. So it's very important for you to follow the number one rule of file management with SolidWorks, which is always use unique file names. That's why if you copy an assembly and you copy all of its parts, it's a good idea to put a suffix or a prefix on the files. 
In fact, it's an even better idea to use part numbers instead of file names when working with this kind of data. Smaller companies or individuals working on contract may have a valid point about using descriptive names rather than part numbers, but if you're working for a larger company and you have many people working on similar projects, it's imperative that you find a way of working where everybody is able to create parts with different names. So this is a case of do as I say and not as I do because all of the parts in my assemblies have been given descriptive names. And a part like valve might be frequently used in other assemblies.